Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, whatever it is for you. Welcome to the Leggy Podcast. I'm going to be your host, DJ. To quickly clarify, a Leggy is in basketball where the ball gets stuck on the back of the rim. The most notable occurrence of this is when Dwayne Wade got it stuck in the playoffs against the Raptors, just stuck on the back. Look it up sometime if you haven't seen it. But today we're going to be talking about Mason Plumley and his contract. I just think that a lot of people have kind of hated on that contract, um, especially the Detroit Pistons. Um, for paying him so much. But when you break down the numbers and compare him to some other players kind of that play like him, kind of other big men um, that have been paid like him, you can kind of realize that. I mean, I don't think it was that bad of a contract. I just think it's because people thought Pistons were shelling out way too much money in this free agency and getting too many centers. I do agree Jalil Okafor was maybe not a great signing uh, so far, especially because we drafted a center that were playing over him. Um but overall, I think the Plumlee contract was good, but I think people pair that with the Jeremy Grant contract, which is $20 mil a year for three years. And I can see why in free agency you would kind of freak out and say that's an awful contract, but looking at what they're doing now, I mean, I would take those contracts again. I mean, I might even give Jeremy Grant another 4 mil. I mean, he's just been playing solid, and I think he can be that guy on the team. Maybe not the number one option on a championship team, but I think he's definitely proven himself as a scorer going forward after being just kind of an off-ball defender, um, an off-ball scorer and defender, I mean. But like I said before, I want to try to compare Mason Plumlee's contract. That's what this little thing is about, and I want to compare him to other players around the league that are being paid similar to him. So first up is Maxi Kleba for the Dallas Mavericks. He signed a four-year, $35.6 million contract with the Dallas Mavericks with an annual salary of... 8.9 8.9 mil, and that's actually 24.8 guaranteed, which is much more than what Plumlee's making, even if it's only 200,000, that's 200,000, and for his value, I don't think it's worth it, so you look at his stats, and over the season so far, he's played 23 and a half minutes per game, averaging 8.8 points, 4.4 rebounds, 0.8 assists, 0.5 steal, 0.7 blocks, and I think with Chris Stapps Porzingis out, you expect more from this guy. Um, He's shooting 50% from the field, but he actually is shooting 48% from the three. And every game, like he's at least shot a three a game. He's at least shot two a game. He's had one game shooting four for five. He had another game shooting three for six, most recently against the Bulls on the third. Um, I mean, that's not awful, but like if you're going to trash Mason Plumlee for his contract, look at this guy's stats. Um, And he's actually down in some of his career attributes. And that's just one thing to look at, especially in blocks and assists, and he's even averaging more minutes now. So that's one player that just kind of makes me wonder why people trashed it, and I don't know if he got trashed as much. That might be because I'm a Pistons fan. I just hear it more, and it <laughs> offends me more. Um, let's move on to Tristan Thompson getting paid $19 million over two years, which is very similar to what Mason Plumlee is being paid. Um, this season, Tristan Thompson is averaging 24.2 minutes, averaging 10 points, 9 rebounds, 0.8 assists, 0.2 steal, 0.7 block. And I'm not going to say that's bad at all, especially in 24 minutes. I mean, if he gets around those 30-minute mark, he's going to be having double-doubles. And so far this season, against the on the 30, he had 27 minutes, 12 points with 11 boards, 1 assist. That's good. Then you see another game, 27 minutes, 14 points, 10 rebounds, another double-double on the 29th, and then he's had multiple games. He's had at least he's had at least eight rebounds in all of his contests, and that is one, two, three, four, five, six contests so far. He just sat out the other game. But that's actually solid contributions from him. So he definitely deserves the contract, but I mean, just wait until we get to Plumlee stats. Next player I want to talk about is Myers Leonard. This is one who people are saying he hasn't lived up to his contract at all. But I don't think he's gotten as much hate or the Heat and the Trailblazers haven't gotten as much hate um, for his contract. And his contract, pay him roughly $9 million a year with next year being a team option. So, I mean, it's ending soon, but that doesn't mean they... <laughs> That doesn't mean it's a good contract. That means they still signed him for a ton. And this season, he's only averaging 11 minutes. He has 4.5 points a game, 1.5 rebounds. I mean, that's not really far from his career average of 16 minutes, 5.6 points, 3.9 rebounds. I mean, if you're going to say Plumlee's not worth it, look at this contract here. Um, that That is just awful. And another one where this one might be controversial is look at Dwight Powell. He at one point signed a three-year, $33 million contract with an average annual salary. Average, why did I say that? With an average annual salary of $11 million. I mean, that's a lot more than what Plumlee's making. But, I mean, some people might say, dude, that's totally worth it. He's the heart of the team. He's the soul. But the stats just don't kind of show that. I mean, he's averaging this season 22 
minutes a game with 5.3 points, 4 rebounds, 1.5 assists, 1.5 steal, and 0.3 block. And yes, that's really good for a center to get 1.5 steals. I know he sometimes plays the power forward as well, but his all of his career stats are down except his steals and assists. Um, that's just not something you want to see, especially his field goal percentage is at 47 where his career average is 56. So that's just one thing you need to look at before you judge a guy like Mason Plumlee's contract. Um, now let's finally get to the big details and let's look at Mason Plumlee. He signed a three-year, $24.6 million contract with the Pistons with 24 being guaranteed and an annual average salary of $8.2 million. And that's, I think, less than anyone we've talked about. I don't think that this was a bad deal. You look at a lot of deals recently, and $8 million per year isn't that bad, is it? I mean, I feel like you look at a lot of other players getting 16 15 14 13 um, I remember Evan Turner getting that huge contract a few years ago. I don't have it pulled up right now, but it's just things like that. And Derek Jones Jr., I believe, you've got a big contract. And it's just it just kind of amazes me how people think that this is one of the worst contracts. Um, this season, he's been, he's been playing 29 minutes, 29.7, so let's say 30 minutes a night, averaging 9 points, 11 rebounds, 4 assists, 1.5 steal, 0.5 block. And I can easily see why people think this isn't a good contract because it's the Pistons, one of the worst teams in the league. You're trying to tank. Why would you sign a guy like Mason Plumley? And I don't think that's the way to look at it at all. I think it's a way to look. I think the best way to look at it would be to say we brought two guys in from Denver this year. I mean, one of the better locker rooms in the league, some of the best chemistry in the league, some of the best players in the league. And these guys are going to be able to teach this young Pistons locker room who hasn't had a good locker room in a long time. I mean, think of their last good team. It was like the late 2000s, and they haven't won a championship since 2004. I mean, you need to add some veteran leadership to this locker room, even if it is Plumlee and Grant. Um, You look at Plumlee's assists. He's up two assists from his career average of two. Um, He's at four this year, and you can see that he's being trusted with the ball more, and I don't know if that's because he came from the Nuggets where they have Jokic who's trusted with the ball a lot, and so Jokic probably taught Plumlee a thing or two, even though I believe he's even younger than Plumlee. um, He taught him a lot of things, I'm pretty sure, when it came to assists. That's just kind of pulling it out of my butt, but when you get two more assists a game, you're obviously doing something right. I know you're playing 30 minutes a night, but I mean, if you can do that, that's great. And another big thing with this contract is we don't have to keep Plumley if we just want to give the keys to Isaiah Stewart next year if he shows enough grit and enough effort. This is a good contract to trade because if you have a center averaging four assists, one and a half steals, and a half a block who might be able to get it up, averaging 11 boards and eight, nine points, I mean, he's not going to be looking to score all the time. He's kind of an off-ball center, and that's really good to see because a lot of teams could use that. I mean, the Celtics have Tristan Thompson now, but if they didn't, Plumlee would be a perfect fit on that team to be able to handle the ball, dish it to Jalen Brown, Jason Tatum. So I just think overall Plumlee gets a lot of hate, Pistons get a lot of hate, but like their signings are really proving themselves worthy. I mean, also look at that Jeremy Grant, 20 mil a year is a lot. I can say that for three years. But like I said, he's proving himself, and if we don't think he is the right player for our team and what direction we're going into – That's a good trading piece once he gets to two or one years left because it could be a good piece that a lot of teams could trade their dead dead weight for. If they have signed a player that has 20 mil left on their contract that get no minutes, trade that to Pistons with a first-round pick. Here you go. There's Jeremy Grant. I'm not saying I agree with that because I really like Jeremy Grant. I really like Plumlee. I'd like to see him be here for the long haul and just kind of help our team grow, kind of like what Blake and Rose is doing. But but don't get me started on Blake Griffin because that's another story for another day of why I think they need to get rid of him ASAP, even if it's for a second rounder, even if it's for dead weight. Just let the rooks play. Let the rooks play. That's kind of how I feel about it. But that's all I have for today. So thank you so much for joining me on the Leggy Podcast. I'm your host, DJ. And again, thank you for joining.